Well, good evening. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Michael Church. I would like to once again welcome you to the adult Sunday school class uh, that is presented uh, by Fire Plains Baptist Church. So we looked last time, uh, as you know, just want to remind you, we're looking through the book of James. Last time we uh, tried to look at James chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Uh, today we will be looking uh, again at James chapter number 1. That will be verses 19 through 27. But uh, again, just a little bit of a review in James chapter number 1. Uh, you have a contrast, I guess you would say. Uh, in James chapter number 1, verses 1 through 18, you have the trials that come from God, as I said in last week's lesson, to grow us and develop us and mature us. And then you have temptation. Okay, God uh, either allows or sends trials to grow us and develop us. Uh, Satan, he sends temptation to destroy us, to hinder us. Uh, and you kind of have a contrast, a comparison of those two again in uh, chapter number one of James. And just backing up for review, James chapter number one and verse number 13, it says, let no man say when he is tempted. Now listen to this. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Now listen to that very carefully. The temptation to sin and do wickedness and do evil is not from God, okay? But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed, his old desires, that sinful nature that still dwells within each of us. If, even if we're saved by the marvelous grace of God and washed in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we still have that war within. We have the flesh and the spirit. Uh, in the book of Galatians, uh, Paul wrote about that. In the book of Galatians, and just give me a moment to find it here, in the book of Galatians, chapter number five, uh, in the word of God tells us, just listen, give me a minute to find it, Galatians chapter number five, and verse number 16, Galatians chapter five, and verse number 16. Talking about that war within each of us. Galatians 5. Sorry, it took me a moment to find it. Galatians 5. Talking about that war within each of us. It says, I say then, Galatians 5, 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, that atomic, sinful, wicked nature that is still within us, even though we, as Christians we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, Amen. We still have that flesh, that sinful Adam nature. And that's what he's comparing here in Galatians 5, 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. They're direct opposites. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Okay, so again, he's talking about that war within each of us. Now back to James chapter 1, verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire, and it has uh, the idea of con conception of a child. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Okay. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Uh, so just a little bit of a review there, okay? God sends or allows tempt uh, trials, pardon me, to grow us and develop us. Satan uh, and our own flesh, uh, origins from our own flesh to hinder us and keep us from being what God would have us be. So now in verse number 19, okay? Uh, so then... So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Three things there. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, quick 
to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Let's pray together. Dear Lord God and precious Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for your precious word. I think of the book of Romans that tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God, we just thank you again for this time uh, to just be used of you to minister to people, to be a help, to be a blessing to people and an encouragement to folks, dear precious Heavenly Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Again, uh, three simple things. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. And I love what an old preacher said years ago. I heard it and it stuck with me. You know, God gives give us two ears and one mouth. So he wants us to listen twice as hard, okay? Two times more than we speak, okay? So I thought that was a good principle. And then he says, slow to wrath, okay? For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God, does not produce the righteousness of God. So again, uh, you know, you can be angry and sin, not Ephesians 4.26 tells us, okay? Uh, but this is a wrong type of anger. Verse 21, therefore, a lay aside, okay? Therefore, because of what I've just said, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, okay? But verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Now listen to verse number 22, but be doers, that is put into practice, live according to the word. Uh, when you read the word of God, do you heed the word of God? Uh, you may read the Bible daily. You may know the Bible, uh, you know, a great deal about the Bible, be able to remember a lot of the Bible and quote a lot of the Bible, which is great. But how much of the Bible do you live out? The Bible is not just for acquiring knowledge. It is to change and transform your life and the lives of others that you come in contact with. Now, I'm not saying that you have the power to save anyone. We don't. There's only one Savior, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But you allow the Word of God, not just hear it, not just know the Word of God, not just be able to quote the Word of God, but live out the Word of God. Do not be, uh, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Not hearers only. Uh, don't just read the Word. Don't just listen to teachings about the word. Okay, don't just be a hearer. Uh, you hear it, but it has no impact. It has no effect in your life. You are deceiving yourselves. You are deceiving yourselves. Listen to verse 22 again, but be doers. Practice, put into practice the principles and the teachings of the word of God and not only hearers, not only hearers, deceiving yourself. And then James, he gives us a wonderful illustration in verse number 23. He says, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, okay, if he just hears it, but doesn't do it, doesn't put the word of God into practice, James gives a great illustration in the latter part of verse 23, starting there. He says, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, just like I'm doing as I'm recording this video. I can see myself in the video, but he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, in a mirror. Verse 24, for he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Okay. Now notice he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But verse 25, but he look he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, again he's comparing two, two things here, uh, a natural uh, a reflection 
in a physical mirror and then how the word of God is a mirror. Verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does, okay? For he observes himself. But again, talking about the uh, uh, looking at our face in a mirror and then seeing ourselves uh, as the word of God shows us. And two, as I was researching for this lesson, I thought about also, I thought about uh, mirrors in the first century were nothing like the mirrors that you and I think of uh, that we have in our homes here today. Uh, they were made out of uh, pieces of metal, uh, different types of metal that had been flattened out and had a high polish, high gloss on them. Uh, but it was nothing to the detail of the mirrors that you and I have today. Uh, but again, still taking it and comparison it to the, the today, we we look and we see ourselves in the mirror. We want to make sure that everything's in order. Everything's exactly what it should be. So verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. So don't just hear the word of God. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be someone who puts into practice the word of God. Um, and then it goes on in verse 26 and 27. He says, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not, Okay, he talks about heeding the word of God, not just be a hearer, but put into practice. And then he says in verse 26, but if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle, that word bridle sim uh, simply means to control. We use a bridle on a horse to control it. And of course, he says a great deal more uh, later in the book of James about the tongue. But he says, and again, and does not control his tongue, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is vain. That is, it is useless. It is useless. So uh, we've got to submit our speech to the Lord, you know, and, and I thank the Lord. I'm I, before, I'm not glorying it, but before I got saved by the marvelous grace of God and uh, washed in his precious blood, um, I had, you know, a, a lot of cursing and, and things coming out of my mouth, uh, but I'm thankful that the Lord has changed that. He has changed uh, my vocabulary. Amen. Something as big as Almighty God comes into your heart and comes into your life, it's going to change the way you live. It's going to change the way you talk. It's going to change the way uh, he is going to change. God is what I'm talking about. He is going to change the way you talk. He's going to change the way you walk. He's going to change the way you treat others. And he will help you apply uh, the truths of the word of God. So we need to submit our speech. And uh, again, I love uh, what a preacher uh, said one time I heard he was talking about the tongue. And, and there was this lady in the church that he was pastoring. And uh, you know, this lady, boy, she was a gossiper. She she murmured. She backbited, just run people down in the ground with her tongue and just backbiting, just putting them down and everything else behind their back. And this lady just used her tongue as, as a weapon to destroy and divide and cause division and discourse uh, in the family and in, in the church as well. And uh, the preacher pro preached on the tongue one day and... Uh, this lady came forward, uh, and the preacher said, well, sister, you know, what's your, what's your need today? She said, well, I want to lay my tongue on the altar. And he looked to the right, and he looked to the left, and he says, I don't know if it's big enough or not, but we'll try. Okay, and I know I meant that as a joke, but uh, two, we need to lay our tongues on the altar. Uh, you know, Proverbs says the power of life and death is in the tongue. We can we can tear others down. We can cause division and, and discord within the church. 
And we've all uh, can, can bear witness to that. The tongue has been used to divide and and destroy and it, I mean it can it can destroy marriages it can destroy relationships it can destroy uh, churches uh, and I thought just the Lord brought in my memory I guess uh, loose lips sink ships you know the the tongue uh, and things that were spread could definitely sink ships and it can sink relationships and things like that as well so verse 27 pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, okay? So not only our speech that God mentions in verse 26, but notice this, our service in the first part of verse 27, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their troubles. To visit orphans and widows in their troubles. Now also you got to think back, even today it is difficult for still get difficult for orphans it's still difficult uh, for widows even today uh, but we didn't have uh, all the different services and institutions that we have to help the orphans and widows that we do today uh, we didn't have all those back in the first century and even though we do have those financial services that we have those institutions God still tells us to visit orphans and widows in their troubles visit orphans and widows uh, visit people uh, be a help be a blessing be an encouragement to people and not only our speech not only our service in visiting orphans and widows uh, but also there is a separation in the last part of verse 27 and to keep oneself unspotted from the world to keep oneself unspotted from the world Come out from among the world, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Uh, you know, I mean, there we have to come out from the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Uh, we have to come out from the world and then go back to the world with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, uh, and that's been James chapter number 1 and verses uh, 19 through 27. Hope it's been a great blessing, a help, and an encouragement to you. God bless you.